Well, hello again. Welcome to today's devotion. I hope this finds you healthy and working for the kingdom of God. Today I want to talk to you about greed and storing up treasure for ourselves on earth rather than heaven. Let's look at our scripture for today, which is from Luke 12, 12 through 15. Sorry, 12, 13 through 15. Someone from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Friend, he said to him, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? He then told them, watch out and be on guard against all greed, because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Now this comes right after Jesus had told the crowd how important it is to stand with and for God. And not to fear those who can only kill the body, but to fear God, who can cast the body into hell after death. Obviously, this man was not listening very well, as he had worldly concerns on his mind. In the law of that time, the elder brother would get two-thirds of the estate of his parents, and the younger brother would only get one-third. This man did not ask Jesus to hear both sides and make a righteous judgment. He asked Jesus to to take his side against his brother. An important side note here is that we should be careful when someone comes to us with an issue with another person, because... We are only hearing one side of the issue. Before giving any kind of counsel, it is important to hear both sides of an issue. Otherwise, we run the risk of giving bad counsel, which may end up making things worse rather than better. As it says in Proverbs 18.13, The one who gives an answer before he listens, this is foolishness and disgrace to him. But Jesus gives an unusual response. Friend, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you? Now, we know that Jesus will judge us eventually, but I believe what Jesus was saying here is that it was not his responsibility to judge every little thing, every little concern that was brought to him, especially when presented to him like this. And perhaps Jesus, who was able to discern our hearts, knew that this man's covetousness would do him more harm than good. While we may fight and fight for what is ours by right, Having it may end up harming us more than not having it. We are called to trust God for what we need, not what we want, nor what is ours by right. If these two brothers were seeking to be rich towards God and trusting God for his providence, then there would be no problem, because the older brother would be eager to share, and the younger brother would be unconcerned about getting anything. And that's how we are to be. Jesus addresses this man's covetousness boldly. Watch out and be on guard against all greed. The phrase be on guard in the Greek means to guard ourselves as if we were under attack by greed and covetousness, protecting ourselves from the onslaught. Did you know that in the United States, suicide rates, that is the number of suicides per capita, are highest among men aged 45 and older, And the rate is even higher in the ages 65 and older. I tend to believe that these men are in the throes of a financial crisis. And seeing no other way out, they choose to end their lives. Chuck Bentley from Crown Financial Ministry says this, I have known six men who completed this horrifying act of self-destruction. I have come to term this tragedy as financially assisted suicide. Satan works hard to cause all of us, especially men, to derive our identity from work or financial success. When a man is out of work or has a reversal of financial success, he senses a loss of identity and purpose. This loss leads him to embarrassment and despair. If we could only assimilate what Jesus says next, one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Your life is not better because you have a better car than your neighbors, or you live in a more expensive house than your sister, or because you buy all the latest fashions. Your life will only become better as you surrender more to God. Our identity is not in our work, or our church, or our children, nor in anything of this world. Our identity is in Christ. We need to remember what it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, 
I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. This age wants to sell you a bill of goods that comes straight from Satan. Satan wants you to neglect your heavenly treasure and store up earthly treasure. Remember what Jesus said about that in Matthew 6, 19-21? Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where sleep thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So yes, work is important, and we need to work to support ourselves. But it should not be your all-consuming passion. Work hard in your job, but work even harder for the kingdom of God. Thanks for watching, and until next time, may God richly bless you as you seek His kingdom. Goodbye.